Welcome to the Heart of the City Regina Downtown podcast series, episode six. I will be your host, Dominika Denev, Manager of Marketing Communication for Regina Downtown Business Improvement District. Today's guest, Mandy Bishop, massage therapist and owner of Mandela Massage, joins for a more casual Wellness Wednesday discussion. Welcome back, Mandy. Hi, Dominika. Thanks so much for having me on again today as a guest. Thanks. I think I almost called you Wednesday. Welcome back Wednesday because I said Wellness <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> See, Aww. more casual conversation here today. Yeah. Um, so over the past few weeks, Mandy and I have been discussing self-care strategies and tips from both Mandy's experience as a massage therapist, as well as a small business owner who has had to pivot her business model during the COVID-19 pandemic. So today I asked Mandy to come back on the podcast, like I said, in the more casual role, to revisit her rule of five technique and share with us how she has been staying resilient in self-isolation over the past five-ish weeks. We said just over five weeks you've been not working at your usual capacity with Mandela Massage. So welcome back. And I look forward to kind of hearing how you've, you know, stayed resilient, what what kind of things have been working for you and also your rule of five, which really hit home for me. Um, I think it was two weeks ago. Now we did a feel good Friday and you brought it up. So I really liked that technique and I thought it'd be great to share again. So thank you so much for coming back. Yeah. Thank you. So I think first I'll just kind of touch on, you know, the strategies that I've been using and, and kind of my own thoughts uh, based on personal interest in terms of resilience and things that we can do while we're at home, you know, we're all in solidarity together, staying home, hopefully, and, you know, observing the social distancing and um, self-isolation in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, But certainly it can be a challenge. As you've said, I've been home for five weeks. I'm not sure when I'll be able to reopen my business. Um, Definitely missing being at work and working with my clients and that sense of normalcy for sure. So, Um, what I had come across the other day that really struck me, and this is a quote that many of you might have seen kind of floating around the internet or as a meme, and it says, in our rush to return to normal, let us take our time to decide what parts of normal we'll we'll be returning to, and that quote is from Dave Hollis, and so that really struck me because it's, you know, it's bringing to light, you know, we might have, myself, I worked 65 hours a week and studied full-time in my Bachelor of Kinesiology, um, program prior to the pandemic, which was incredibly rewarding. I'm very passionate about, you know, health and, and wellness and caring for others. And so, you know, I, I didn't necessarily feel overworked at that time, although that's a, that's a huge load, you know, 65 clinical hours and admin and, and studying and all that kind of stuff too. Um, but now that I've, I've kind of had a forced, um, relaxation period, I guess you could call it, um, through self-isolation, it has, you know, caused me to think, well, as much as I'm genuinely very passionate about helping others and, you know, doing the best that I can do and and continuing my education always to provide the best um, possible care to my clients, I still do need to take care of myself. And, um, you know, I was listening to your last podcast the other day um, when you had chatted with the psychologist, Wendy. Yes. And you had said, you know, I really needed to take some time for myself and to prioritize my own needs. And um, I think that that's really an important step and an important part of, of resilience is being able to take a step back and assess what your needs and your feelings are at the time. So I think, you know, many of us, certainly myself included, um, might hear the word resilience and might think, well, resilience to me means pushing through no matter what. But I don't think that that's actually true, you know, from the from the research that I've done or, or just, you know, reading through different articles based on personal interest. Um, what I've found is it's more about going with the flow. Resilience is more about going with the flow than it is about pushing as hard as you can for as long as you can, essentially, until you break, right? That's not healthy and it's not sustainable. So um, I had actually found an actual, uh, a gem of an article from the American Psychological Association talking about um, building resilience. And so some of the items that they talk about is, um, you know, really focusing on building your connections. That has so much value today, you know, looking at we're in self-isolation and we do need community, you know, human beings need one another. We need a social environment. So um, prioritizing your relationships, even if it is just through social media or FaceTime or phone calls is so important right now and is really going to help us all get through this tough and uncertain time. Um, and then as well, it talks about fostering wellness. So, I mean, of course, you know, I, I love health and wellness and it's a huge passion and interest of mine. And it's really talking about taking care of your body. So when we did our last feel good Friday, we had chatted a little bit about, um, 
bringing some normalcy back into our lives. You know, we, if we know we need to drink eight glasses of water a day, then, you know, we need to stick to that. If we know that we need to eat healthy meals or we need to follow a certain diet plan, then we need to stick to that, even though it might be tempting to feel like, well, I'm in this confusing situation where it almost feels like I'm on vacation because I'm at home, but I'm not, you know what I mean? So we do need to stick to some level of routine to give us that feeling of safety, like we talked about in our last Feel Good Friday. So um, we had chatted a little bit about habits and about neuroplasticity. So neuroplasticity is really just how your brain grows and changes and, and forms new neural connections. And so the more you do something, the, the more those cells are going to communicate within the brain and they're going to form that connection. So in terms of building healthy habits, for example, taking your vitamins every morning. Mm -hmm. I myself have got fish oil sitting in my fridge. I need to be taking every morning and a probiotic <laughs> too. And I never do it. And, you know, like I'm totally copying to that. I'm, I'm admitting that I'm, I'm only human. I might have a huge interest in health and wellness, but like I'm just, you know, the same as everybody else. So, you know, for me, what might work would be setting a certain time every morning or, you know what, I'm going to associate that fish oil and probiotic with my morning coffee. And when I'm making my morning coffee, then I might take those things at that time. And then if I repeatedly do that action, I repeatedly, you know, keep that as a routine, then I'm going to be able to maintain that healthy habit. And the more frequently I do it, then it'll just be like clockwork for me. So, um, yeah, just really looking at what we can do to support our wellness and support our relationships in this time so that we do um, get through this tough time feeling like we have a support system. And then we had also chatted a bit about mindfulness. And so, uh, Dominika, you mentioned that you had a bit of a mindfulness practice in your, in your yoga practice and all of that and journaling. Yeah. So um, I can kind of revisit that too. Like I sure. have a little morning routine and I feel um, like if I don't do it, my day's off. Like I just feel like, I don't know, like you, I've tried it before just to test it out. And so if my routine is I've, I've been waking up at five 30 and I have to tell you this this past weekend too, I set my alarm and I didn't realize on Saturday <laughs> and all of a sudden five 30 and everything is going off. And I'm just like, what is going on? What is it work day already? Like I was just like, Oh my gosh. And no, I, my alarm went off on the wrong day. So, but anyways, I got up because I'm like, you know what, if I go back to sleep right now. I think that's going to be the worst decision because I'm already wide awake. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I did my normal routine as if it was a work day. So I woke up at five 30, I go put on my tea. Um, and then I get my, I have a little heater in my meditation space in the front of my house. So I put my little heater on and then once the tea boils, I get that ready. And then it's basically, it's a, I use the calm app, um, really inexpensive app. I think it's about 80, dollars for the full year. Um, and I put that on and they have really short, like under 15 minute calm, like meditation kind of, they give you really good. I feel it's like a nice kind of set for the day where they give you a tone for your day, things to think about. And I always journal after that. And then the routine that I implemented when we were sent home was I was able to start doing a gratitude in the morning, as well as a setting a daily intention and kind of like a mantra for myself. So I'm really into using words and the power of words and how that helps your brain over time. Um, just really like focusing on things. So that's kind of my own routine and just things I've kind of learned over the years that have helped me. So that's a big thing that I've been doing. And then um, I think that's basically what you were talking about. Hey, was my morning kind of yeah. get ready. Yeah. yeah. And then I do like lately with work, it's been, I'm not a big, I'll just plug this on here, but like, I'm not a huge multitask person and anything I've read about it is it's not really, it seems like it's not really good for you, right? Like you should like it's prioritize not. your day, right? And then <laughs> yeah. like tick things off the list, right? Not be like, okay, I got to do X, Y, Z and I'm going to do them all right now. And then your brain's just like, you can't focus, right? And so I've really been trying to stop that because I feel, especially with working from home, you could be multitasking all the time and working all day, which is not sustainable, like we said. And so I've been trying to like this past week or two here, really cut back on what I'm trying to do at one time and just have like a priority of like, okay, these are the first five things I'm going to do. And then when I'm done those, if there's more time in the day, I'm going to work on these next three. If not, those are like my first thing tomorrow. So just really reminding myself, like you said, of like taking those breaks for yourself and just really as much as we're trying to help each other during this time and be a community, you still have to help yourself or you're going to get sick in some other ways. Right. So oh, sure. yeah, those are just my little tidbits of things that I've been really trying to focus on. And, you know, you said you listen to the podcast and me 
what I had brought up and you and I spoke the one day when I, when I kind of cracked, I said, right. Like I got really upset that day and there was a traumatic experience that happened with a friend of mine. She lost her dad and it just brought up all these emotions. But I think the emotions were so strong because the last four weeks before that, it was like adrenaline just pushing me through this, like working from home, this new, the new normal right now, how am I going to help each other, like help these businesses with the bid? And what does this look like? And it was just over time, it wore me out. And I didn't realize that's where my body was at. Like my brain, I was able to like, okay, no, you can keep doing this. But my body was just like, no, you can't. <laughs> like yeah. you need to slow down. So in yoga, I just was a puddle, <laughs> but that was a good reminder, right? Like you're, you can only handle so much. And I know you talked on that about that. And I, I can't remember the terminology, but it has to do with the brain and how your body can only handle so much. Um, and I thought that was super powerful. So, oh, you kind of cut out there. For I think. Sure. Yeah. No, this oh, matter. Matter. oh, sorry. That's okay. Are you there, Mandy? Yes, that you had done last week with Wendy and what Wendy was saying about, um, you know, being able to process your emotions and not thinking, well, what am I but more processing? working through that and how that's the healthiest thing that you can do so um you know i certainly recommend like any of our listeners if you're feeling like that is the message you need to hear oh last week with tips Andy, and i'm just so- gonna pause here for a second sorry mm-hmm. listeners we're having some technical difficulties you keep cutting out on my end here so i might get you to repeat the last little bit that you said sorry i didn't hear it no that's okay I sound you sound better now. I can hear you now. Okay, great. Yeah, no, I had just I was listening to your um, Heart of the City podcast series episode five with Wendy Turner Larson, um, and I just had really loved what Wendy had said in terms of processing emotions and not necessarily trying to focus on well, what am I thinking right now, but more so how am I feeling. So I was just recommending our listeners to go back um, to last week's podcast and listen to. Um, episode five with Wendy Turner Larson because I thought that there was a lot of good tips in there in terms of processing your emotions as you had touched on you know you said you had processed those emotions through yoga where your your friend's um, father had passed away unfortunately and that that was a good outlet for you so Mm -hmm. yeah so um and then too I just wanted to touch on what you had said you know when you checked in with yourself and you recognized that you needed a rest and you needed a break. And I think that that's so healthy. I think for myself, you know, like I said, I have a bit of a tendency to be a bit of a workaholic and all this stuff, but the one sort of quote or saying that stuck with me over the last year is rest is resilience. And it really is, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, we have to bend before we break. It's really easy to feel overwhelmed by this pandemic and you know how can we keep our businesses afloat or our family afloat or you know when are we going to be able to return to normal and all that kind of stuff and so with the rest is resilience it's really just recognizing that we're in it for the long haul whatever um, coping strategies that we have in place have to be sustainable for the long term so you know, for myself, someone like myself, who's got more of a workaholic tendency, I mean, certainly I I have things that I need to accomplish and goals I need to stay focused on. But at the end of the day, if I just stress myself out about that 24 seven, you know, there's going to come a point where my body is going to crash, because I have too much stress hormones, and I haven't, I haven't practiced balance, right? Yeah. So it's really just recognizing that, you know, rest really is resilience, the more balance we have, the better we're able to manage our stressors and cope with them in a healthy way, the longer we're going to be able to cope with a stressor like this pandemic, right? So I like there is a quote that I've seen before. I think it was on the call map too. And it was short and sweet. It's okay to just go to bed. I was like, yeah. oh, that is a good one. I'm like, <laughs> I think that was me. I don't know. It was this, I think it was this past Friday. It was like just exhausted by the end of the day and recording all the podcasts, which is amazing and getting to talk to everybody, but it's, like I've just, you're constantly talking, you're on your computer, you're on your phone. Right. And then it was like, we shut down Friday and I had dinner and I think I didn't even like, I just threw on pajamas. I was like, I'm not even showering. I'm not even worrying about it. I'm just going to bed. <laughs> I was like eight o'clock and I was passed out. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> Why not? Right. And I mean, yeah. I think I'm feeling even more tired and it is just because of the stress of the situation where's the person out, you know? So, yeah. And then we're chatting about sort of your daily mindfulness practice when you do your yoga and your journaling and your meditation 
Um, you know, another point that this article from the APA touches on is finding a purpose. And so I like to think about it as setting an intention for your day. And that's kind of similar to what you said that you had done, right? So mm -hmm. focusing on the power of your words and focusing on what's your intention for the day. And that can be taken in a few different ways. You know, you could take that in a spiritual way where you could say, okay, for myself, I might say my intention for today is to be patient with myself, you know, to recognize that I'm not going to accomplish maybe everything on the list, but I'm still going to be diligent and focused, but I am going to set boundaries with work so that I do get enough family time and I do get enough sleep and self-care, right? Yep. yep. And I love writing it down because it's always yeah, nice so to like reflect back, right? So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then too, in terms of, you know, in that sort of spiritual way, I'm going to accept myself, I'm going to love myself, I'm going to be patient with myself, whatever the case may be. Or you could also apply that setting your intention for the day in terms of managing your workload. You know, like you said, you're steering away from multitasking. So you might say, okay, well, I have on my list five things that I want to tackle today. I'm going to do the best I can, but I'm not going to stress myself out and multitask. I'm going to focus on each item at a time and I'm going to do the best that I can at that time and that within itself is still practicing your mindfulness right mm -hmm. because really mindfulness is just being present in the moment so yeah yeah one well, another thing too like Wendy talks a lot about in her um like trainings that I've been through too is that one of the things is people pleasing right like we do a lot of things in our daily lives um to please other people. And it's like to get that recognition from other people is sometimes why we do that. Right. And mm -hmm. that's a thing that like, I didn't really think I fell in that category. And then when she, she also does like these Wednesday shorts for businesses and these uh, sense and soul Saturdays where she comes on and does Facebook lives. And it was Saturday that she touched on that again and just the people pleasing and how um, unaware we are that we do that. And it kind of hit home again. Cause it's that wanting to be recognized or wanting people to think of you a certain way. So that's why we just keep pushing in the, you know, like we talk about that um, really hardworking mentality and sometimes we do it to ourselves and you don't realize. Right. And I think mm -hmm. I may have been experiencing that a bit just with the pandemic because, you know, you feel like, okay, my job's marketing communications. Like I got to be busting all this information out. People are relying on me and da, 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 Right. And you just like feed that information to yourself. And then you're just like, but like, I'm not, the province and I'm not this and I'm not that. And that's not, you know what I mean? Then you try to have to well, like, I talk myself down like, okay, Dom, you're, you're doing enough. Like you're doing a lot. And, and I like one of the things that she said, and I remind myself of that is like, you are enough, right? Like, and you, and to say that to yourself as a, I am enough, like what I am doing is enough. Right. And to remind ourselves to not try to keep pushing harder and harder, even when we are doing a good job. So um, I don't know if that made sense, but I just, that just reminded me Absolutely. of what she said on Saturday. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I love that. And thank you for sharing. And honestly, like, you know, I'm, I'm looking through some of these talking points here and one of them is talking about self-discovery. And so I think that that's, you know, really kind of builds upon what you've just said. And in terms of when you do need to take a step back and, and you can process your emotions and be present with how you're feeling and what your needs are, it does open the door to self-discovery, you know, and I think for a lot of people, myself included, it's so easy to get wrapped up in, that your, ide your identity is your job or whatever the case may be. And it's still wonderful to be very passionate about your career or about your vocation or whatever the case may be. But um, I think an un unintended blessing of this pandemic is actually the opportunity for self-reflection. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know? And that can be a really challenging thing to come face to face with if you're in self-isolation and especially if you're self-isolating alone. Um, so certainly, you know, reach out to the support that you need when you need them, reach out to your friends, to your family, you know, phone calls, social media, FaceTime, whatever, reach out to appropriate mental health supports when you need those too. Um, but just taking the time to reconnect to self and figure out, you know, what are, what are the things that are really serving me in terms of like my health behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. or my, um, my thought patterns or my coping mechanisms. And then what are the things that don't serve me and that I can try to let go of and to allow to fall away during this time. So, yeah. So self-discovery I think is also so important. And then just keeping things in, pers in perspective. So certainly, you know, it can be really overwhelming to every day, not know how the situation is changing, when we'll be able to return to normal, all that kind of stuff. Um, but just keeping it in perspective in terms of, well, what I can control, like we said in one of our previous podcasts, is my internal environment and my external environment, right? Mm -hmm. So 
we're going to follow the recommended orders to stay at home in self-isolation. We're going to follow the hygienic practices, hand washing, you know, 20 seconds, um, hand sanitizer when that's not available, all that kind of stuff, you know, like wearing a mask when you do go outside, if that's been recommended for your community, all those things. So we can only control what we can. And beyond that, we have to just trust in our system. And I think that our government has been doing a really wonderful job um with that so far so and then just accepting change you know like we can't um we can't expect that we're going to be you know totally the same amount of productive the way that we were on a normal day when we're working from home we can absolutely try our best but us you know who have kids or who have um spouse, spouses that are essential workers that we're a little bit more concerned about or you know might not even be able to do their jobs from home like myself you know there's a huge portion of my job that i just can't do while i'm at home and so we just have to accept those changes and kind of roll with the punches i guess you could say mm -hmm. we want to have that flexibility so we're not so rigid in our expectations of the situation that we cause ourselves mental right like we really do need to be flexible and roll with the punches and do what you can with what you have in the situation for sure absolutely so. yeah and i think like a big thing too i know once we come out on the other side of this for myself is the good things that i've implemented and the things that i've learned during this time i really am going to work my darndest to like make sure that those are still in my life right like it's you don't want to sometimes revert back to say what the old used to be too now if there's a new normal right like keeping that balance too because some people may have started really good routines from home, right? And just being mm. able to not get stuck in that rut of, okay, now I'm back to work. Now I have to be doing this again and working at this speed, right? Like just to be able to like be mindful of that and remember bringing those good things forward that you learned over the last little while, I think is going to be a big thing for myself um, to stay grounded. Because I know once people it is back to work and back to normal, whatever that looks like. It's going to be, you know, everyone's going to be super excited and want to ramp things up and get things going and be like gung ho, like super. But again, that only can be sustainable for how long too. Right. So I think my note from all of this is just to remember to only kind of do what you can handle normally um, throughout this and going forward. So. Yeah. And then, you know, just if there is new habits that you've picked up and you want them to stick, I think it's really just about repetition, you know what Absolutely. I mean? Yep. So the more you stick with it in terms of repetition and then like we said that journey to self-discovery and realizing like okay well what are the things that I would do on a like quote-unquote normal day um, pre-pandemic that were not serving me or you know things like you said Wendy had talked about the people pleasing or over committing to things all that kind of stuff now is just such a good time to really reflect on what serves you and what doesn't you know and what you can allow to fall away so that like we said with that little meme, you know, when we return to normal, when we return to normal, we can decide what parts of normal we are returning to. So, yeah. Yeah. So to kind of end our podcast for today, I just wanted to touch again on our sort of rules of five that we talked about when we discussed mindfulness on the last um, um, Feel Good Friday on April 10th that I was present on and then we did a previous podcast on it. So we had discussed um, using our five senses to stay grounded, five things we're grateful for, and box breathing as methods to just sort of keep us grounded if we're feeling overwhelmed. And um, we won't go too into depth into that. If you guys are interested, you can check out the, the other podcast and l listen in there. So the box breathing is really just a good tool to keep you or your spouse or your kids grounded if you're feeling feelings of overwhelm and what that is is you're just you're taking a deep breath in to a count of five you're kind of holding that breath to a count of five and then you're exhaling to a count of five so for myself i just kind of like to have that little tool in my back pocket so that if i'm feeling really overwhelmed by the situation and i'm feeling those feelings of anxiety that i know i can do five deep breaths in pause for five five deep breaths out and then that's going to help to calm my nervous system down so it's sort of like a hack to get around um you know those feelings in the moment still processing those emotions um but without letting it get out of hand I guess you could say mm -hmm. and then using the five senses to stay grounded um, is typically what I would progress to next if I needed it so I would still be practicing that deep breathing but then I would be focusing my um, attention to each of my five senses so first I would focus on well what are five things in my environment that I can see and so you know you can listen to that podcast I have a painting in my room here and I might 
look at the painting and note the different shades of color and then if you know kind of noticed everything that I can visually about that item I would move on to the next item so five things that you can see four things that you can touch and feel so I'm sitting on a velvet chair so I might you know reach down and and just focus my perception on that sensory input just focus on what that feels like to try and calm myself and calm those emotions and then I would progress to what are three things I can hear and then two things I can smell and then one thing I can taste so it's doing you know at first we said the box breathing breathe in for five pause for five exhale for five do that for five deep breaths and then five things you can see four things you can feel three things you can hear two things you can smell and then one thing that you can taste and then the last thing about the sort of rule of fives to stay grounded is practicing gratitude um, so it might just be like five things that you're grateful for and you might say, okay, well, today I'm really grateful for my partner and I cooked an awesome breakfast. And I'm grateful for having a roof over my head. I'm grateful for my family and friends. I'm grateful for my education. And I'm grateful for my work. You know, whatever it is for you that day. And if you're having a really tough day, if you can just come up with one thing that you're grateful for, it's still a step in the right direction. So having a positive outlook, I think, is so important during this time. Absolutely. Thanks for revisiting those, Mandy. I think they were great. Um, and while you were saying that, I just kind of put my headphones down quick and ran to my other room because I forgot that um, when it comes to those senses, like that's the first time I've heard of that before. And I really like that practice. And I have a book here, The Art of Making Memories that I bought. I started reading it, I think the beginning of this year, but the author, um, I think it's Mike Wiking, M-E-I-K. Would that be pronounced Mike? Miak, Miak, Mike? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I'm probably butchering it on here, but it's really cool. The book is called The Art of Making Memories and it's how to create and remember happy moments. But when you talk about the senses for April, they kind of break down um, every month of things to do. And it just talks about using your senses in there as well. So it just reminded me of that and how every week to dedicate each week to one of your senses. And then that might be even a nice way to do your gratitude journal. So if people don't have they don't know what to be grateful for, then maybe if you're practicing the senses, I just thought of that. Maybe that's a nice way to be like, oh, you know, I just heard a bird and I'm really grateful for being able to have, you know, be the birds are coming out more or whatever it may be. Right. So I don't know. That just kind of reminded me of that. I thought I'd bring it up. So yeah, I, like I ran that. over and grabbed the book. <laughs> for sure. I really like that. It sounds like a great read. And um, for myself, I'm kind of thinking like, oh, what am I going to do for the rest of the afternoon? And I, I have finished my work and I think I'm going to watch that Inside Out movie, if you've heard of it. Um, so basically, it, it's a it's an animated movie and it was created for children, but it's actually a wonderful movie for adults as well. I've seen it before and um, sort of talks about the different emotions that um, the main character is experiencing. And it's just a really cute way to um, pass the time, you know, certainly in self-isolation. And it's a good movie to watch with kids if you're having that discussion around trying to manage emotions and um, ways to calm down. I think it's a really good visual representation of some of the emotions that they might be feeling. You know, kids love routine and unfortunately a lot of our routines have kind of been turned upside down. So Cute. Yeah, I wrote that one down too. I've heard of it before, but I don't, I don't think I've actually ever watched it. So it's you, super cute. Is yeah. it on Netflix? Did you say? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's on Netflix. Um, we have uh, Netflix and Prime, but uh, yeah, okay. I, it was a while since I've seen it, but I, that's my plan for the rest of the day is to kind of watch that one. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote that down too. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Mandy. I really appreciated you coming on the podcast the last few weeks and then coming back again today. And Mandy will be back in the future at some point once we come up with some more discussion ideas. And, you know, once she's back to work, we might ha do some other, um, we have some other ideas for once that's kind of back to the new normal, whatever that might be. So I really enjoyed having you on here and having these discussions and just want to remind everyone everybody where they can follow along with Mandela Massage one more time here. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, Dominica. So um, if you are on Instagram, you can type in Mandela Massage Regina and you'll find me there. And um, the same on Facebook and on YouTube as well. I have a new channel that I'm kind of just getting started. So if you're curious to hear about some of the topics that I'm interested in, in terms of health and wellness, you can always check that out. And then on Twitter, I'm at Mandela YQR. Um, I also have a website, so that's mandelamassageregena.com. 
So there's a blog there. You, there's a link to the YouTube channel. Um, we do have some self-care products available for sale as well as gift cards um, during the pandemic. So you can check all those things out. And I just want to remind everybody that if there's any content that you would like to see from myself and from Dominica, you can by all means reach out to Dominica or to myself. Um, and then we will consider your ideas and pull them together for future content. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Mandy. I'm going to stop the podcast there. We could probably talk all day, you and I, but we'll have to quit it there. Have a great <laughs> so day, awesome. You have a great day. Bye. Bye.